So this is a Nerf Rhino Fire, and the trigger has never really worked right on it. It used to be where you'd have to push, and I, you just had to really, really push down, and you thought you were going to break it by doing it, and, well, someone did break it by doing it. So I'm not sure if it was a design flaw in general, or if my version just had a flaw when it was built or what. But what happened was inside is this little piece of plastic. And that little tip on the end broke off as you can see, like a three by three millimeter triangle or so. And this is the part that actually makes contact with the trigger on the gun, pushes this, activates the switch, switch to start the motor, and then to actually fire and then the triangle end, I think, is supposed to interface with the safety interlocks on the side that hold the drum magazines so that you can't fire it if the magazines are not in place. That's my best guess of the triangle piece that comes off the top. Well, mine was jamming every time the trigger was actually pushed into that safety interlock. So I took care of that and created a replacement trigger mechanism which is right here as you can see it doesn't have the triangle piece coming off the end um, there's still some extra pieces in it that I haven't pulled loose from the supports so that it can actually print the STL for this is available in the description so let's do the teardown Okay, as you're, as you're pulling this apart, well, it just flew off, as you can see. You need to, the only springs you need to worry about are the mounts at the top on the rail. Uh, you need the, whatever you want to call this, arm. We'll call it an arm. This arm just connects by clipping in the pin. And now you're to the inside. So the broken piece is right here. As you can see, it's now white. Well, that come off too. As you can see, it's now white because it's a 3D printed piece. This assembly actually just pops out. And this is your trigger. Let's see if I can zoom that in. Your trigger. 
Uh, there's a little circuit board with the switch and then the piece that I replaced. There are two clips on the inside. If you take a screwdriver and pry this clip that's closest that's in the middle out, the original piece will pop right out. Uh, after you add the replacement piece, it's a really snug fit. So if you ever need to remove it again, you will have to pry quite a bit harder to remove it. I would hope it doesn't need to be removed again. It's reinforced in as many places as I could, as I could come up with. So there you go. You pop out the orange piece and slip in the replacement. Now the, when the replacement prints, if that's going to focus, there we go. There are supports here and here that need to be popped out. You take a small knife and pry up just to get it started. You can just take a pair of needle nose pliers and pry it the remainder of the way. And the same thing on the other side. Push in, pry up. See, don't even need the pliers, fingernails work. And then the only other support is the small piece below the spring holder and that just pops right off and the parts good to go you may need to sand this is how it fits into the gun the pins are the bottom you may need to sand this bottom rail slightly and the other side the bottom rail slightly uh, it was a very snug fit on mine and a little bit of sanding took care of it and it operates very smoothly and I mean a minute of sanding is all it needed. So after you replace that piece, you take this, slip this back in. The part of the handle goes there. You find your spring that sprung. It goes into the circle side. And that slips right in at the top on the rail. And then everything just fits right back into place. It really is a very simple disassembly and reassembly. And it's actually easier than several other guns I've dealt with from Nerf. Just make sure if the front plate fell out when you were working that you reattach that you slip it back in before you start screwing everything together or you'll get to unscrew everything to put it back make sure you reattach the pin into the sliding arm so the gun works properly and make sure you put this part of the handle back into place I forgot that one once and if you thought you could do it without taking the battery compartment off or if you test it with the batteries in place before you reassemble it, which is always a good idea, uh, make sure you take the battery cover off because you cannot put the gun back together without the battery cover off. So, When you're reassembling, if you didn't keep track of where the long screws go and the short screws go, which, you know, happens, the long screws go here, can you see that? Here, 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 uh, where's the other one? Here, and I believe that's all of the long screws. All the other screws are the short ones, and they, the short ones are all identical, so it should be quick and easy. Um, total time to disassemble, replace, and reassemble. Once you've seen what the issue is, is less than 10 minutes. So that's it. Rhino should have renewed life, hopefully forever, at least until a motor burns out or something or the part breaks again.
then you just print another one and do it again. So until next time. <laughs>